Africa is often seen as a continent rich in natural resources but limited in technological breakthroughs. Yet one man has changed this perception forever. Maxwell Chikumbutso, a self-taught innovator from Zimbabwe, stunned the world by creating vehicles that do not require external charging or refueling. This invention is not just another electric car. It is a self-powered EV that could rewrite the future of transportation. The Environmental Defense Fund recently weighed in on this development, highlighting facts that most people never expected to be true. The idea that a car could move indefinitely without plugging into the grid or burning fossil fuels sounds like science fiction, but it is now part of Africa's reality. Chikumbutso's invention is rooted in a principle he calls clean and self-sustaining energy harvesting, which taps into electromagnetic fields to power the vehicle. The Environmental Defense Fund found this approach fascinating because it bypasses the conventional limitations of batteries, charging stations, and fuel infrastructure. Unlike Tesla or Toyota hybrids that rely on massive lithium-ion batteries, Chikumbutso's vehicle reportedly generates its own continuous supply of electricity. This fact alone challenges the biggest assumption in the EV market, that range anxiety is unavoidable. Imagine driving across thousands of kilometers of African terrain without ever worrying about running out of power. The Environmental Defense Fund was particularly surprised by how the technology fits Africa's unique conditions where charging infrastructure is scarce or non-existent. In places where power grids are unreliable or absent, a self-powered car is not just a convenience, it is a lifeline. Communities that once depended on expensive and polluting diesel could leapfrog directly into a clean mobility future. The EDF emphasized that this model of innovation, technology born out of necessity, shows how Africa can lead in sustainability. They noted that while most of the world debates over charging stations, Africa may not need them at all if self-powered EVs scale successfully. This shifts the environmental narrative in a surprising way because it means Africa could become the first region where green transport is both universal and independent. Another fact the Environmental Defense Fund shared is that these vehicles not only run themselves but also produce surplus energy. That surplus can power homes, farms, or small businesses in off-grid villages. Instead of being just a car, it turns into a mobile generator that improves quality of life in remote regions. EDF experts highlighted that this dual purpose could cut the use of kerosene lamps, diesel generators, and wood burning, all of which harm both human health and the climate. For decades, international reports described Africa as a victim of climate change rather than a source of solutions. Now, thanks to innovators like Chikambutso, the narrative is shifting towards Africa as a pioneer of climate resilience. The EDF called this a surprising yet inspiring twist in the global energy story. Another fact that shocks many is that Chikambutso dropped out of school and taught himself electronics through trial, error, and faith. The EDF emphasized that disruptive innovation does not always come from billion-dollar labs in Silicon Valley. Sometimes it arises from a backyard workshop driven by necessity and vision. The Environmental Defense Fund explained that such grassroots innovation often produces designs that are simpler, cheaper, and more adapted to local realities. This is exactly why Chikumbutso's self-powered EV resonates with African communities. It is built for their roads, climates, and needs. The EDF also drew attention to the fact that these vehicles are not only sustainable but also potentially more affordable in the long term. With no fuel costs, no charging fees, and minimal maintenance, the lifetime expense could be dramatically lower than conventional cars. This means that Africa's middle class and even rural families could realistically access cleaner mobility without subsidies. The EDF was also surprised by how this technology could accelerate Africa's path toward its climate commitments under international agreements. By bypassing the fossil fuel stage and jumping straight into self-sustained energy vehicles, Africa may become an example for the rest of the world. They pointed out that while industrialized nations are struggling to reduce carbon emissions, Africa may avoid creating them in the first place. Another fascinating fact revealed by the EDF is that self-powered vehicles could reshape trade and logistics in Africa. Transport costs remain one of the biggest barriers to regional trade on the continent. If trucks, buses, and delivery vans run indefinitely without imported fuel, the cost of moving goods will drop sharply. This could unlock massive economic potential while also slashing emissions. The EDF explained that this is one of 
those rare innovations that simultaneously addresses poverty, climate change, and inequality. At the same time, they acknowledged skepticism in the scientific community about whether the technology has been independently verified at scale. This fact did not escape their attention, but rather they described it as a call for open-minded investigation. They noted that disruptive technologies are often dismissed early on, only to later prove transformative. The EDF said the responsible path forward is not blind acceptance or blind rejection, but rigorous testing, transparency, and collaboration. This is another surprising fact, an environmental watchdog openly encouraging research into a radical idea from Africa. Usually, watchdog organizations focus on critiquing industry practices, but here they are advocating for deeper exploration of a grassroots innovation. The EDF's engagement itself is proof that Chikumbutso's self-powered EV has reached a level of global credibility. They explained that whether the technology works exactly as claimed or evolves into something new, it has already sparked a wave of innovation across Africa. Students, startups, and investors are now asking whether Africa can set its own path in green technology rather than waiting for imports. The EDF believes this mindset shift is just as important as the invention itself. One of the most surprising environmental benefits they highlighted is the potential to avoid large-scale lithium mining. The global EV revolution has raised concerns about mining impacts in Africa itself, where countries like Congo supply most of the world's cobalt. But if vehicles become self-powered, the pressure to extract these minerals could drop significantly. That means Africa not only provides the innovation but also avoids the environmental damage that plagues other EV supply chains. The EDF called this a double victory, sustainable mobility without the ecological cost of massive mineral extraction. They further explained that this positions Africa not as a resource colony for global industries, but as a knowledge hub for sustainable solutions. Another unexpected fact is how faith played a role in Chikambutso's innovation journey. He often says his designs came through visions and inspiration, something mainstream science usually avoids discussing. Yet the EDF observed that innovation often requires thinking beyond conventional limits, and in this case, belief fueled persistence. They explained that while the mechanism behind the technology needs rigorous validation, the story behind it highlights the role of diverse thinking in sustainability. The Environmental Defense Fund was also struck by how quickly the idea of self-powered EVs spread on social media across Africa. Instead of skepticism, many young Africans embraced it as a symbol of hope and independence. They explained that narrative power matters as much as technical power because it shapes what people believe is possible. For decades, Africans were told to wait for outside solutions, but now they see one of their own leading in clean tech. The EDF said this psychological shift could be one of the most transformative outcomes of all. Another important point they raised is that even if the technology faces hurdles, the idea itself will inspire new breakthroughs. Just as early solar panels were inefficient but sparked a global industry, self-powered vehicles could evolve into multiple new designs. The EDF emphasized that innovation is often iterative, and Africa has now planted the seed for a whole new industry. They also noted that the timing of this invention is crucial. The world is in a race against climate change, and every alternative that reduces emissions is valuable. If Africa contributes a solution that even partially works at scale, it changes the global equation. The EDF said it is surprising that the world looks at Africa primarily as a victim of climate change, when in fact it may hold some of the keys to solving it. They concluded that Maxwell Chikambutso's self-powered EV is more than a vehicle, it is a statement. A statement that innovation can come from unexpected places. A statement that the future of clean technology does not belong only to billion-dollar corporations. And a statement that Africa is ready to define its own future. The Environmental Defense Fund also pointed out that self-powered EVs could drastically reduce Africa's dependence on imported oil. Today, Many African economies spend billions every year buying fuel from abroad, draining resources that could be used for education, healthcare, and infrastructure. If vehicles no longer need fuel, that money can stay within local economies and stimulate growth. This surprising fact underscores how energy independence is tied directly to economic independence. The EDF explained that for decades, Africa's development has been slowed by the high cost of fuel and unreliable power. 
Now, with self-powered EVs, the possibility of building a transport system free from those constraints becomes real. They emphasize that this shift would not only benefit city dwellers, but also rural populations who have long been excluded from modern mobility. Farmers could bring their crops to market without spending a fortune on fuel. Students could travel to schools across long distances without worrying about transport costs. Health workers could reach remote villages without relying on fuel deliveries. The EDF described these outcomes as surprisingly practical and immediate, not distant or theoretical.